shortly after tweeting the U.S. military was locked and loaded should North Korea act unwisely, President Donald Trump returned to Twitter on Friday to emphasize his point by retweeting images of U.S. B-1 bombers currently stationed in Guam, featuring a series of photos depicting B-1B Lancers deployed to the U.S. territory, the tweet from U.S. Pacific Command said. A key part of the U.S. military's tip of the spear, U.S. B-1 bombers have been seen regularly over the Korean Peninsula in recent months amid escalating tensions with Pyongyang, running regular training flights with Japanese and South Korean fighter jets that often provoke the ire of the North Korean regime. On Tuesday, Trump warned Pyongyang not to make any more threats against the United States or they will face fire and fury like the world has never seen. Soon after Trump's comments, North Korea issued a statement saying it was examining the operational plan to strike areas around the U.S. territory of Guam in the Pacific, including the Anderson Air Force Base where the U.S. B-1 bombers are stationed. While it was released Wednesday, the statement was dated Tuesday and didn't make any reference to Trump's comments. It did, however, express anger over a U.S. flyby of B-1B bombers on Monday. Another statement was issued by North Korean state media Wednesday warning the U.S. that a preemptive strike is no longer the monopoly of the U.S. The highly versatile, supersonic B-1 is considered the backbone of the U.S. long-range bomber fleet and carries the largest conventional payload of any aircraft in the U.S. Air Force. The U.S. is currently rotating six B-1s through Anderson Air Force Base in Guam which would serve as a key aerial asset should Trump order a military strike on North Korea either preemptively or as a quick response to escalation from Pyongyang. While the U.S. would likely use stealth aircraft such as the F-22s, F-35s and B-2 bombers to lead an initial strike targeting North Korean air defense systems, B-1S would likely be dispatched from Guam once those defensive capabilities were disabled, utilizing its heavy payload to strike North Korea's fortified nuclear weapon sites, according to Carl Schuster, a former director of operations at the U.S. Pacific Command's Joint Intelligence Center. Launching a devastating preemptive strike against North Korea is almost unanimously considered a last resort for the U.S. and analysts said there are currently no signs that the U.S. is planning a first strike. The U.S. would surely use military force in response to any North Korean strike against American or allied targets, but two U.S. defense officials told CNN on Thursday that there are no signs of any imminent launch activity from the rogue state. But the concept of preemptive military action is, at very least, being considered as an option as Trump remains committed to keeping all options on the table amid tensions with Pyongyang. Claims that Pyongyang is considering a missile strike near Guam, coupled with Trump's warning military solutions are now fully in place, locked and loaded, should North Korea act unwisely, have fueled concerns of a potential conflict. On Thursday, North Korean state media KCNA said military leaders were working on a proposal to launch four intermediate-range Hwasang-12 missiles into the sea less than 25 miles off Guam's coast. KCNA said the plan would present it to Kim by mid-August. Guam's Homeland Security Advisor George Charforas said Friday it would take 14 minutes for a missile fired from North Korea to reach Guam. It's a 14-minute flight time if all the factors are successful and if it gets through all the U.S. defense layers in place, Charforas told CNN. North Korea had previously said the flight time would be 1,065 seconds, or just under 18 minutes. On Thursday, Trump replied to North Korea's threat to hit Guam with a threat of his own. Let's see what he does with Guam, Trump said in apparent reference to Kim. He does something in Guam, it will be an event the likes of which nobody has seen before.